Hi there, I hope you are doing well and welcome to Depth First. In this video, we will be exploring the A star search algorithm. What you see here is a map of North America with arbitrary cities that have edges connecting them. The number that you see between each edge is the cost to travel between these cities. Please note that the cost here is not necessarily the Euclidean distance between them. The cost of travel can vary based on various factors like slow roads, tolls or high traffic areas just to name a few. These types of real life considerations influence the cost of travel between two cities. If the starting city is A and the destination is I, what is the minimum cost to travel from A to I? We can always use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the minimum cost. By the way, understanding Dijkstra's algorithm is crucial for grasping A star. I have linked a video below if you would like to review. So when we apply Dijkstra's algorithm, we examine all the neighbors of a node that's being processed, prioritizing them based on their costs. Let's assume we are processing the starting node A. The neighbors of A are B, C, E and F. Nodes B and C have a lower cost of 1 and 2 in comparison to the costs of E and F. In Dijkstra's, we prioritize exploring nodes with lower costs such as B and C and then proceed in the direction of D before moving on to higher cost nodes like E and F. This approach might seem a little off, right? Because as humans, when we search for a path, we typically don't start in the opposite direction. The thing is that in Dijkstra's algorithm, we rely solely on the cost information available to us. Of course, it will traverse towards nodes or cities with lower costs first, eventually reaching the destination. Now, what if I told you we know a little more in this problem statement? What if we knew of some estimated cost to the destination from each node? Then, can we modify Dijkstra's algorithm to utilize this additional information? This estimated cost is known as a heuristic and when we enhance Dijkstra's algorithm to utilize this heuristic, it transforms it into an informed search known as the A star algorithm. The addition of the heuristic makes the search process more efficient. Let's now delve deeper into the algorithm. I'll create a grid with X and Y axis and assign each city its respective X and Y coordinate. For finding the path with minimum cost between nodes A and I using the A star algorithm, we will use Manhattan distance as the heuristic function. Let's say node 1's coordinates are x1 and y1 and node 2's coordinates are x2 and y2. The Manhattan distance between these two nodes is the absolute value of x2 minus x1 plus the absolute value of y2 minus y1. I have provided detailed explanations of Euclidean and Manhattan distances in another one of my videos, which you can find linked below if you'd like to check it out. We'll process each node similarly to how it's processed in Dijkstra's with a key difference and we'll review that next. Let's say we are currently processing node N. In Dijkstra's algorithm, we calculate the cost from the source node to N which we denote as g of n. In A star, we not only calculate g of n, but also the estimated cost from n to the destination, denoted as h of n for heuristic. That will be the Manhattan distance in our case. Next, we compute the total estimated cost to reach n, which is the sum of g of n and h of n, denoted as f of n. In A star, we use f of n to determine the priority in which nodes are processed, leading to a more informed search. In contrast, Dijkstra's algorithm uses only g of n to determine the processing priority of nodes. I hope this explanation has helped clarify the difference. As we step through the algorithm, you'll see how the addition of heuristic helps target the search. This is the exact same graph that we have been reviewing so far. I laid it out this way as it's easier to visualize the graph traversal and I need this space on the right to walk through the algorithm. You may have noticed that the nodes are colored gray and that just indicates that they are undiscovered. 
Once we have navigated to it and are in the process of examining all the connections originating from the node, we'll consider that node discovered and change the color to orange. After completing the examination and navigating away from the node, we will mark it as explored and modify the color to green. During the traversal, we'll keep track of the cost to reach a particular node from the source node in a dictionary. We don't know anything right now, so we'll set their values to infinity or the maximum value possible and we will update them appropriately during the traversal. Whenever a node is processed, we do three calculations. First, the G cost representing the cost from the source node to the current node is computed. Second, the H cost or heuristic, which is the Manhattan distance from the current node to the destination node is determined. These two values are added together to obtain the F cost. Subsequently, this F cost along with the node is pushed to a min heap or a priority queue. So this summarizes the process. And now let's walk through the algorithm. Before we do that, could I please ask you to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying the content of this video? Please do leave a comment if you have any feedback. Your support encourages me to create more videos like this one and help others as well. We'll start with node A and since we are starting from it, we'll set its cost to zero in the dictionary and heap push a tuple containing A and its cost of zero to the min heap. This is where we'll start our while loop. While there are elements in the heap, we'll heap pop. A is connected to four neighbors B, C, E and F. We can examine any one of these neighbors, but for no specific reason, let's examine node B. Remember that each time when we examine a node, we will calculate its G cost, H cost and F cost. The cost to reach node B from A is 1 and A's cost is 0 in the dictionary. So the G cost of node B is 0 plus 1 equal to 1. Since 1 is less than B's cost in the dictionary, we'll update it to 1. For the H cost, we'll use the Manhattan distance. The X and Y coordinates of the destination node I are 9 and 6, and B's X and Y coordinates are 2 and 2. Therefore, the Manhattan distance from B to I is 11. The F cost will be 11 plus 1 equal to 12. We'll heap push node B and its F cost of 12 to the min heap, and mark it as discovered. The next random node we'll examine is node C. The cost to reach node C is 2 and A's cost is 0, so the G cost of C is 2. Since 2 is less than C's value in the dictionary, let's update it to 2. Node C's X coordinate is 3 and Y coordinate is 2. Therefore, the Manhattan distance or the H cost to I is 10. The F cost is 10 plus 2 equal to 12. We'll heap push 12 and node C to the min heap and mark it as discovered. Next, we'll examine node F. The cost to reach node F is 5 and A's cost is 0. So the G cost will be 0 plus 5 equal to 5. Since 5 is less than F's current value in the dictionary, we'll update it. Node F has X and Y coordinates as 5 and 4. The Manhattan distance to the destination from F is 6. Therefore, the F cost is 6 plus 5 equal to 11. We'll heap push node F and its F cost of 11 to the min heap and mark it as discovered. Do recall that the elements in the min heap data structure are not necessarily sorted, but anytime you heap push or heap pop, it will maintain the heap property of keeping the element with the minimum value at the top. In our case, the tuple containing the minimum F cost will be the topmost or the first element. The last unexplored node connected to node A is E. The cost to E is 4 and so the G cost will be 0 plus 4 equal to 4. 4 is less than E's current cost in the dictionary and we'll update the cost to 4. E's X coordinate is 4 and Y coordinate is 5 which makes the Manhattan distance to node I equal to 6. The F cost is 4 plus 6 equal to 10. We'll heap push node E and its F cost to the min heap, marking it as discovered. 
We have completed exploring all nodes connected to A and so we can mark it as explored. Next, we'll heap pop node E. Notice how we are processing nodes closer to the destination first by adding the Manhattan distance, which is our heuristic to the G's cost, to determine priority. The only unexplored node connected to node E is I. The cost to reach I is 4 and E's cost in the dictionary is 4. Therefore, the G cost of node I will be 4 plus 4 equal to 8. 8 is less than I's current cost in the dictionary and so we'll update it. Since I is the destination itself, the Manhattan distance will be 0. The F cost will be 8 plus 0 equal to 8. We'll heap push node I and its F cost to the mean heap. We have completed exploring all nodes connected to E and so we will mark it as explored. The topmost element of the priority queue is node I. We will heap pop it. The node that is currently being processed is the destination and so we will return its cost of 8 from the dictionary. With that, we will exit the loop. This also brings us to the end of the walkthrough. The next topic we'll explore is how do we choose a heuristic in an A star search algorithm? The choice of heuristic depends upon the type of problem we are trying to solve. I have used Manhattan distance in the walkthrough, but there could be cases where a Euclidean distance is more suited or a diagonal distance. This could be used in a grid based environment where diagonal movement is allowed like in some gaming applications. Heuristics have certain properties such as being admissible and consistent. I won't get into those specifics in this video. And with that, let's get into the code for the A star algorithm. Here is a representation of the graph in the form of an adjacency list where each node is the key and its value is the list of tuples. The first element of the tuple is the node it's connected to and the second element is the weight of the edge. And this is a dictionary of coordinates where the key is the node and its value is a tuple of its x and y coordinate. We will be passing these two dictionaries to the A star search function that we'll review next. The A star search function takes four parameters, graph and coordinates dictionary, source and destination. We'll start the function with a few variable initializations. We'll declare an empty dictionary called gscore to track the g cost to reach a particular node. We'll enumer enumerate the graph's adjacency list to obtain all keys which represent the nodes in the graph and initialize them to infinity. We'll set the cost estimate of the source node to zero in the dictionary and also declare a set called explored to track the explored nodes. We'll declare an empty list called heap. We will heap push source and its cost estimate of zero to the min heap. We'll continue a loop while there are elements in the heap. The first thing that we'll do inside the loop is heap pop the node. If the node is same as our destination node, that means we have arrived and we will return its cost from the dictionary. Else we'll continue exploring. If the node is already in the explored set, we'll skip it and continue to the next element in the heap. Else we'll add the node to the explored set. Next, we'll iterate through each connected node and its cost in the graph. If the connected node has already been explored, we'll skip it. Otherwise, we'll calculate its G cost by adding the cost of the node we have recorded so far in the dictionary and the connected node's cost. We'll then calculate the H cost, which is the Manhattan distance, followed by the calculation of the F cost. We will review the get Manhattan distance function on the next slide. If the G cost of the connected node is less than what has been recorded so far, we'll update the score and heap push the connected node and its F cost to the min heap. If for some reason we are not able to find the destination, we'll return none. Essentially, the key difference from Dijkstra's algorithm is the calculation of H cost and F cost as indicated by these two lines here, and that here we are using F cost instead of G cost when pushing to the min heap. Dijkstra's algorithm can also be viewed as a special case of A star where the heuristic cost of all the nodes is zero. Here is the Manhattan 
distance function, which is quite straightforward as it is the exact implementation of the formula we have just discussed. I have included a GitHub link of this code if you would like to check it out. And now let's go over the time and space complexities before we wrap up this video. In the worst case, the time complexity of A star search is O of B raised to the power of D, where B is the branching factor and D is the depth of the tree. The space complexity is also O of B raised to the power of D. However, with a good heuristic, the time complexity can be much lower, often close to O of D. With that, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.